So the postmodern age is coming to be defined by this anti-intellectual hatred for the truth. Now that naturally leads us onto another feature of the age, which is that those that then speak the truth will increasingly be hated and reviled for doing so. As Selwyn Duke said, the further society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. G.K. Chesterton made a prescient statement about this descending madness a long time ago as well. He said, we shall soon be in a world in which a man may be howled down for saying that two and two make four, in which furious party cries will be raised against anybody who says that cows have horns, in which people will persecute the heresy of calling a triangle a three-sided figure and hang a man for maddening mob with the news that grass is green. It's almost uncanny how accurate that statement actually was. We really do now live in a generation where people are howled down for saying that two and two make four. Similarly, for stating other obvious facts, self-evident truths, like this is a 52-year-old man and not a six-year-old girl. This is a woman, not a cat. This is a man, not a dog. Even though these things are basic, absolute, scientific, rational, self-evidently true, Saying these things now makes you an enemy of the liberal utopia, the kind of world that the liberal elites and establishment are trying to build. And so now you'll often be reviled for saying these very self-evident, factual, scientific truths. Now, when you get howled down and cast out of society for speaking plain facts like this, it's become known as being cancelled. It happens regularly in our time, unfortunately. When someone deals in any kind of truth that threatens to cause offence, liberals tend to form aggressive mobs to intimidate and silence that speaker. And often the aim of cancellation is not just intimidation and silence, but it's to ruin that person's life and destroy their livelihood. For example, in the summer of 2018, a French teacher at West Point High School, Virginia, a man called Peter Vlaming, was cancelled for refusing to refer to a female student with male pronouns. He said he couldn't refer to her as male because truthfully she wasn't, and his religious beliefs forbade him from lying. Now, even though Vlaming had basic, absolute, biological, rational, and self-evident truth on his side, he was still howled down by the liberal mob for saying it, and he was fired from his job. He lost his livelihood. A similar incident occurred in 2019 with a British Christian doctor called David Macarith. As a man well acquainted with biology, you know, being a doctor he would be, he said that he simply could not refer to any six foot tall bearded man as madam. He said that to do so would be ritual denial of obvious truth and that as a doctor he knew maleness and femaleness are unchangeable and fundamental to who we are as people who were created in the image of God. Again, he's biologically correct, but Macarth was howled down and he was fired from his job as well. In 2021, Kathleen Stock, a professor of philosophy at the University of Sussex, became the subject of controversy when she said that biological sex was immutable. She said that individual feelings about gender identities are not more important than facts about biological sex particularly when it comes to law and policy. She too was howled down by students for stating these plain scientific facts. And indeed, such was the backlash against her statement that she faced social isolation from colleagues and a coordinated campaign by students to have her fired from her role as well. Because of death threats, she was also advised by the police to install CCTV around her home and consider hiring bodyguards to protect her on campus. One final example. When Professor Robert Winston, a renowned British doctor, scientist and television presenter, was asked for his views on Kathleen Stock's situation during an appearance on BBC's Question Time, he said this. Uh, I'm about to say something which will mean that you'll probably want to edit the programme when I finish. But basically... Uh, okay. <laughs> right. OK, I, we're I all say, braced for I will, it. I will say this categorically, that you cannot change your sex. Your sex actually is there in every single cell in the body. You have a chromosomal sex, you have genetic sex, you have hormonal sex, you have all sorts of different kinds of psychological brain sex, they're all different. And we are very confused about this, unfortunately, and, and regrettably it's got into this argument that people are now would, will now accuse me of being transphobic. Oh, well, Lottie, there are trans people who say you absolutely can do that. Well, unfortunately, you can't say this publicly. This is one of, this is one of the big problems. Even saying, saying this on this programme undoubtedly will result in my getting a huge amount of hate mail. It always does. Overall, I think it's a very sad thing that we can't discuss biological science 
without actually getting completely caught up emotionally with something which is really completely wrong. Professor Winston was howled down for stating these facts on national television, and it's unlikely the BBC will give him a platform to speak about the subject again now, simply because he dared to speak the truth, the plain, scientific, self-evident, biological truth on the issue. Now, if you know that speaking the truth, no matter how self-evident or scientific, is going to mean all of these things, it's going to mean cancellation, hate mail, death threats, the loss of friends, platform, opportunities, livelihood and income, the pressure to stay quiet is obviously immense within that kind of atmosphere. I mean, after all, if blaming Mackerath, Stock and Winston had only kept their mouth shut, they would have kept their jobs and had much, much easier lives. So many people are now being presented with this dilemma in the postmodern age. What do you do? Speak the truth and lose everything? Or simply bow to the mob? Stay quiet, keep your head down, affirm delusions and say things that you know aren't true? for self-preservation. Although blaming Mackerath, Stock and Winston chose the former option, many of their colleagues in their spheres of work consider the price of cancellation too big a price to pay and are choosing the latter now. Indeed, many of their colleagues, many of the colleagues of these people apparently wrote in private to express their sympathies, but added they couldn't support them in public because they just couldn't afford to lose their livelihoods. Therefore, we have arrived at a kind of tyranny today. There is a figurative gun which is being pointed at everyone's heads when they open their mouths. And it means that if anyone dare to speak the plain truth in public, or even to speak what they honestly think it might be, their lives can be actively destroyed. Many then are just intimidated into silence. They refuse to say things that they know are true. They refuse to say that two and two make four and that grass is green or say what they really know about biology because to do so would mean absolute ruin. On the 26th of September 2021, the leader of the British Labour Party, Keir Starmer, was asked if it was right to say that only women have a cervix. Now there's a clear scientific answer to this question. Only women have have a cervix, it shouldn't be controversial to say it. But this is how Keir Starmer chose to negotiate that question. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? Well, it is uh, something that uh, shouldn't be said. It is not right. But One week later, the then British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, was asked the same question. But Boris Johnson sidestepped the issue entirely, refusing to confirm or deny whether he believed only women had a cervix. In early 2022, a United States Supreme Court judge nominee was asked to define what a woman was. She said she couldn't. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? not in okay. this context, so I'm not a biologist. The the Why were these people not willing to speak the plain truth in public? They all know what the answers are, we all do. They know that only women have a cervix and they know what a woman is, but they won't say it in public. Why? Well, simply because they're terrified. They're terrified that if they speak the plain truth, there will be mobs, hate mail, death threats, loss of jobs and income, there will be cancellation. Now, of course, under these circumstances, people don't stop believing the truth just because they're being intimidated into silence. Everyone continues to know these things. They know that only women have a cervix and nobody really stops believing in biological sex just because there's a gang with torches and pitchforks outside your house. Look at this example of Macy Gray, who said what she thought in public and then was chased and howled down by the angry mob. Say this and everybody's gonna hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. Mm. Like, if you want me to call you a her, I will, because that's what you want. But that doesn't make you a woman just because I call you a her and just because you got a surgery. With chilling predictability, Macy Gray stuck to her guns for a couple of days and then the onslaught was so overwhelming mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. her, she had to go on national television in America, issue a groveling apology. Yeah for everyone that she'd hurt with this statement of what many would think is just a statement of biological fact. Mm -hmm. How have we got to this place where women are terrified of saying what a woman is and women who do say what they think it is, i.e. there are clear biological distinctions between a man and a woman, they get destroyed. Did Macy Gray suddenly stop believing the truth just because she was being intimidated into silence by a baying mob? 
No, she continues to believe the truth. She continues to believe exactly what she believed before. But what happens is that the truth merely goes underground in these circumstances. Truth continues to be spoken, but only behind closed doors now and in hushed tones amongst trusted allies. And that alone is extraordinary that we find ourselves in that position, that we in Western civilization, who used to pride ourselves on our freedoms and whose identity has almost been defined by those freedoms, who like to refer to ourselves as living in the free world, and yet we now find ourselves behaving as if we were living under a communist regime, afraid to speak our minds freely in public now and being intimidated into silence. And yet as we journey deeper into the postmodern trench and as the prevailing far left, soft virtue only ideology takes hold, this trend of totalitarianism is only likely to grow going forward. And what's also sinister is the fact that big tech, social media companies, and even the police and government are falling into this far left ethos right now. A few years ago, I made a video for The Fuel Project about transgenderism, where I said it may be better to deal with gender dysphoria with counselling rather than by performing irreversible surgeries. A bit like what I said a couple of episodes back, I didn't think it was particularly controversial. But YouTube at the time regarded it as being hate speech and a strike was placed against this channel. Since YouTube operates a three strikes policy, it was effectively an intimidatory warning to stay quiet in future or else have my platform removed altogether. I received a similar suspension from Facebook a few years ago for a video that merely quoted passages from the Quran because it was ironically deemed offensive to Muslims, no less, who apparently were unaware of their own book's violent content. I was again warned that future posts of that type would mean cancellation of my Facebook account. It's an effort to intimidate into silence. It gets worse when the police are involved though, and this is becoming increasingly common now, unfortunately, as well. The police are now actively monitoring social media feeds and are taking action if anyone is deemed to have said something offensive, something that just offends another person, the police are now getting involved. In January 2019, for example, a man called Harry Miller was investigated by the police for a tweet where he merely questioned whether transgender women were real women. The police rang him to, quote, check his thinking. So we have actual thought police now. There have been more examples of police intimidating people over tweets. And there are also many examples of Christian street preachers being arrested for merely quoting the Bible in public. Now, up until now, centuries old laws have protected freedom of speech in this country and British citizens have generally escaped prosecution for these things. The charges against Christian street preachers, for example, have invariably been thrown out by UK judges until now. The judges also ruled in favour of Harry Miller, saying that the police had overstepped their bounds. However, governments can always change laws. Therefore, at the time of making this series, it is ominous that the UK government is currently attempting to pass what they call an online safety bill that would allow them to regulate and criminalize free speech on social media platforms. This would mean that you don't only get thrown off the platforms by the companies themselves, which is bad enough, but the police would then have the power to go beyond intimidation and successfully prosecute in the future. In 2021, the Scottish government also sought to introduce what they called a hate crime bill to allow the police to successfully prosecute speech, free speech, if it offended another person. Now, all of this police and government involvement clearly adds an extra layer of intimidation for the ordinary person. Speaking the truth now doesn't only just mean cancellation and baying mobs, which was bad enough, but the way that the wind is blowing in the future, it could also mean a criminal record and possibly even jail time as well, if we continue down this path. Now, my response to all this is simply that we cannot submit to this encroaching totalitarianism and this repression on free speech. There are some principles in life, there are some transcendent causes that are worth sacrificing personal comfort to preserve, even upon the pain of punishment from the state. And freedom of speech is one of them. To give up freedom of speech is to give up freedom itself. As Benjamin Franklin said, whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech. And as George Orwell said, if liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people things that they do not want to hear. Once you lose the freedom to articulate your thoughts and express your beliefs freely, you've lost all your freedoms. It is the most fundamental of all the freedoms and the one upon which the rest depend. The fate of Western civilization, and I don't think that I'm overstating it when I say this, 
literally depends upon how readily we defend this right to free speech and to individual expression. I read a tweet recently that said, I believe in freedom of speech, but that doesn't mean saying things that others might find offensive. That is literally what it does mean. That is the definition of freedom of speech. If you're not free to tell people things they don't like, then your speech isn't free at all. Now, that's not to say that we should deliberately try to offend anyone. That's not our intention at all, especially as Christians. Indeed, the Bible tells us that when we are speaking the truth, we must do so in love. It says, instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. As always, we as Christians are to blend both the virtue sets, but at the same time, never give either of them up, which means that we must defend the truth. To stay quiet or to confirm absurdities for personal comfort just isn't an option here as a Christian. Submitting to tyranny never is. We must speak the truth in love, but it is the truth that we must speak nonetheless. I will continue speaking the truth on this channel for as long as I can, no matter what the cost is, because I believe that this matters. It matters more than personal comfort. And I want to take this moment to encourage everyone else watching this video, especially Christians, as much as you are able to resist the tyrannical intimidation as well. We all have our own things to lose by this, but as much as you are able, resist this tyrannical intimidation. Keep speaking things that you know are true or even things that you think may be true and refuse to be intimidated into silence. Refuse to echo lies. If you won't defend these freedoms now, they'll simply become harder and more costly to reclaim further down this line. And meanwhile, our society will not just sink further into foolishness, as we've seen in the last couple of episodes, but also into tyranny. The further a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those who speak it, but we must speak it anyway. Please do.